Excellent. And uh, Marius, you can plug yourself in. Mm. Mm. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen? Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Good. So our next speaker uh, is Mar Mariusz Majar uh, from Jagiellonian University. Uh, go ahead, Mariusz. Well, so uh, the purpose of my talk is twofold. So first, I want to uh, argue that uh, medical research uh, is now uh, well accepts uh, moderate causal pluralism as uh, their view on uh, causality. And this part is uh, quite descriptive, or I try to reconstruct uh, what are the views of researchers on causality. And in the second part of my talk, I want to um, show that uh, this view, uh, causal pluralism, has uh, quite strong implications for clinical practice and uh, the evidence uh, that is needed for different clinical decisions. And I will differentiate between three types of clinical decisions and uh, argue that not all uh, these decisions require uh, evidence uh, that asserts that uh, interventions uh, can be uh, conducted. So uh, there's no need for um, evidence for uh, causality and studies in, in terms of manipulability. Uh, well, so uh, first, um, I'm sure that you were well aware that um, the discussion in philosophy of causality is quite uh, differentiated. Um, you can roughly say that there are five different uh, big approaches to causality. So it's uh, regularity, probabilistic, uh, manipulationist, uh, mechanistic, and counterfactual. And I will not discuss counterfactual anymore because I believe that it's mostly concerned with uh, singular causation and uh, medical research is uh, mostly, mo mostly about uh, establishing um, type level causality. So uh, therefore, I, I will uh, skip this, uh, the last approach. Um, so uh, when I was reading the literature on uh, what is the view on causality uh, presupposed by, uh, by medical researchers or um, which is a view, what is the view on causality uh, that, is, uh, that is adequate to medical research? Uh, these views, uh, the response to these questions are quite differentiated. Um, and therefore, if uh, you could uh, accept that uh, different uh, studies uh, presuppose different views on causality, uh, then uh, that would explain that uh, if uh, some philosophers uh, chose uh, just one or a few case studies or uh, one subdiscipline of medicine, then uh, they uh, put forward a definition of causality that is uh, adequate to that case studies or um, that uh, subdiscipline. And um, they obtained different, they delivered different responses because, uh, uh, because of uh, medicine as a whole being causally pluralist. So um, I, I'm using uh, the approach of referential semantics. Um, well, it, basically, it's uh, the idea that if a cat thinks about a fish, then uh, this uh, fish uh, re refers to a real uh, fish that uh, swims in an aquarium, for example. So uh, similarly, <clears throat> if um, a researcher uh, says that A causes B, uh, so, for example, that uh, garlic uh, reduces the length of uh, common cold, then this uh, reduces or causes. So, uh, these are um, causal family words, roughly speaking, uh, have to refer to something. And, and this something, uh, this causal relation in, in the um, in, in, in biomedical reality, uh, can be discovered with uh, different research methods that are used by uh, researchers. And because uh, we as philosophers have uh, no access to biomedical reality, so we cannot compare, um, for example, this causes uh, or reduces uh, what are the reference of these words in reality, we can only say, uh, mm, or at least I believe so, we can only say uh, what are the reference in terms of what can be discovered uh, by the research methods used by uh, researchers. So, for example, if um, someone um, gives uh, vitamin C uh, to people in a randomized controlled trial, uh, then uh, they can discover uh, that uh, this vitamin C or garlic, for example, 
uh, reduces uh, or cures a uh, common cold. Uh, well, so uh, in, in my view, uh, contemporary medicine um, can be, when it comes to evidential standards or uh, types of research methods, can be, uh, roughly speaking, divided into three uh, main uh, approaches or three types of uh, research. So these are randomized controlled trials, uh, observational uh, studies or uh, epidemiological research, and uh, also basic uh, research such as uh, animal studies or in vitro studies. Mm. Now let me uh, discuss uh, a few case studies uh, that uh, mm, presuppose different views on causality. And uh, on, on the ground, I will conclude that uh, medicine is a causality pluralist discipline. So um, the first uh, case study is uh, quite a mm, famous uh, study from uh, two years, uh, from one year before. Um, uh, published in 2019, that showed that uh, this uh, mysterious uh, vaping-related uh, disease uh, is related to uh, vitamin E acetate. Um, and well, when it comes to the research method, uh, they uh, listed uh, all potentially harmful, harmful additives in. Uh, that can be found in, uh, in this uh, vaping products. Then they um, took samples from uh, the lungs of people who suffered from um, uh, this uh, vaping-related uh, disease. And then uh, they looked for uh, what uh, additives uh, are present in uh, all samples. So uh, this method uh, is quite, uh, well, actually, it, it is exactly the same as uh, John Stuart Mill's uh, method of agreement. So uh, in this case, you just look for um, a um, condition or a factor that is present across uh, all uh, samples or uh, all uh, instances. And uh, on this ground, you conclude that uh, uh, this factor is a cause of, for uh, the phenomenon or for the effect. Uh, and it is, uh, mm, I think, widely accepted that uh, Neil uh, was inspired by the regularity uh, view uh, on causality or uh, the Humean uh, view. Uh, well, the second case study is uh, mm, the case of, uh, mm, well, quite uh, standard uh, epidemiological research uh, where uh, people uh, gather uh, data um, on a cohort. Uh, in this case, it was uh, data from uh, well, from a military database <coughs> in Israel that covered uh, people's age, uh, the age of uh, adult uh, of their parents and uh, their uh, diseases, and uh, the researchers. Uh, um, calculated uh, a simple uh, econometric or well, a simple statistical model where um, they tried to uh, calculate the uh, estimate the risk of uh, autism spectrum disorder depending on a few uh, on a few uh, variables one of them was uh, paternal age and uh, they discovered uh, that uh, paternal age is significantly uh, correlated to, uh, um, to the risk of uh, autism spectrum disorder. And because uh, there is no other uh, research, and of course, uh, paternal age is prior to uh, developing the, um, the symptoms of uh, autism, uh, they concluded that uh, Mm, it is uh, causally uh, related to uh, autism, and uh, you know to to put forward uh, such a conclusion, uh, they had to accept um, one of the versions of probabilistic view on causality, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, you can reformulate uh, Safi's definition, uh, probabilistic definition, into uh, the context of variables. Uh, not to discuss uh, probability of events, but um, prob prob probability in terms of partial correlations uh, between uh, or among variables. 
And of course, uh, you can say, uh, you, you can ask that maybe they just accepted a version of manipulationist definition of causality, where for you could say that uh, by reducing uh, paternal age, uh, you reduce uh, the risk uh, of uh, ASD uh, in your offsprings. Uh, but the problem is that uh, on the basis of uh, correlational models uh, from estimated on observational data, you can never exclude uh, that there is some other uh, in, well, a common factor that in the case of uh, uh, philosophical literature it is called uh, common cause or in the case of uh, statistical literature it is uh, labeled the problem of confounding where this uh, variable z Mm, um, causes um, or influences other variables and therefore uh, you observe just a spurious correlation uh, between your cause and effect within the model uh, while in fact uh, the causal structure that produced uh, the data are, is in fact different. And of course uh, you always intervene in uh, the reality and not in the model so you have uh, more uh, dimensions in the sense that uh, there are more uh, variables that can potentially influence uh, the results so uh, therefore you cannot uh, translate uh, the meaning of probabilistic causality into manipulationist terms. Um, well, and uh, the next case study um, is uh, quite uh, also quite quite sound uh, paper from um, 2018, uh, where um, researchers uh, established uh, a mechanism between um, blue light uh, emitted by LCD screens and uh, problems with uh, eyesight. Um, so. Uh, uh, what they did was, uh, um, uh, well, so basically, I interpret this, this uh, result uh, their, their, or the research method in terms of uh, the minimal view on uh, mechanisms, where uh, mechanisms are defined as uh, entities uh, that interact with each other and uh, create a causal relationship uh, at the higher level. And um, of course, uh, mm, you cannot, uh, mm, well, the knowledge of just one mechanism uh, does not allow you to intervene on uh, that causal relationship because uh, it's possible that there may be uh, other mechanisms that screen off uh, this mechanism or uh, mu multiply uh, the effects of that mechanism. So you cannot predict the effects of interventions on the basis of uh, just one uh, mechanism, even, even if you uh, uh, understand it correctly. And um, the next uh, study is an RCT. Uh, I have chosen this, uh, this study because it's a uh, quite famous uh, record trial. Um, it turned out that it was criticized later uh, because, uh, well, because of some uh, problematic uh, research method and in particular inclusion criteria. But it is uh, quite useful um, for my purpose because it uses, uh, uh, well, it's uh, a study that uh, attempts to assess the harms of an intervention and not uh, efficacy. And therefore, uh, there is no mechanistic knowledge. So it's purely, um, purely the evidence from RCT uh, allowed uh, to establish uh, causality. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, it turned out that uh, rosiglitazone uh, in increases the risk of uh, congestive heart failure. Mm. And uh, in that case, uh, researchers, uh, well, so, mm, well, so, sorry. Um, I, I need to highlight that uh, there is no uh, mechanistic evidence for or mechanistic understanding of how resiglitazone um, can uh, influence uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Um, here is a quote from Anisten and Wolski's uh, meta analysis. Um, and therefore, uh, researchers to uh, put forward an, an, a causal conclusion on the basis of their uh, RCT 
they uh, need to um, accept a version of either manipulationist or agency uh, view on causality. Um, and because, uh, for example, Woodward's uh, view on causality, which is quite uh, popular in, in philosophy, is considered as uh, being uh, only an ontological definition in the sense that you cannot uh, test it because uh, of some very strict uh, requirements. Um, I, I take uh, this the record trial uh, as in agreement with uh, a version of uh, the agency uh, view on causality where um, uh, that roughly states that if you can uh, intervene on A and in this way influence B, then uh, A causes B. And now um, um, I want to uh, focus on, on uh, clinical practice and different types of clinical decisions. Um, well, because uh, I will later argue that uh, EBM is uh, causally uh, modest, it only accepts a version of manipulationist view on causality, and maybe uh, it may be not adequate to all types of clinical decisions, and therefore maybe we should uh, accept uh, a more pluralistic view, especially that, uh, as I have shown uh, previously, uh, medical researchers uh, seem, uh, at least uh, as a group, seem to accept uh, causal plural pluralism. Well, so um, first, uh, let me introduce um, actions uh, understood as uh, either interventions or decisions, uh, clinical decisions that uh, do not change the relata of uh, causal claims. So, for example, if you have uh, mm, probabilistic or regularity uh, evident that X causes, uh, so prob probabilistically causes Y, you uh, can never exclude the possibility that it is in fact some other uh, cause A that is a common cause for uh, the correlation you observed. However, um, and well, and therefore if you would accept uh, a manipulationist definition of causality, then you would have to say that uh, there, you, you do not have uh, evidence for uh, action. However, if you differentiate actions uh, from uh, other clinical decisions, then uh, you can uh, you can say that it may you can uh, use this knowledge uh, to act in the world um, in a way that does not influence uh, x to to change y. So, for example, you can use the knowledge of uh, correlation between a paternal age uh, and uh, autism spectrum disorder. Uh, for example, to screen uh, children uh, of other fathers more often, or uh, insurance companies uh, use this uh, correlation between uh, the color of car and uh, the probability of accidents, not because uh, you know you can just repaint your red car uh, to reduce uh, the risk of your accident, but. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, it is just a correlation and you can successfully um, act in the world uh, on the basis of such correlations. Uh, now, um, let me turn to mechanistic interferences, which I define as uh, creating uh, a mechanism in the, in the target. So, for example, uh, creating a mechanism in your patient or um, um, stopping a mechanism from operating in the target. And such interventions uh, or mechanistic interferences uh, mm, are not uh, certain to produce uh, mm, expected effect. Um, so one example is uh, putting infants on their backs, uh, uh, which uh, actually caused that they uh, suffocated more often uh, in the past. It's quite a famous example. Another would be to uh, stop smoking uh, to uh, interfere with the mechanism that. Uh, creates uh, lesions in, in your uh, uh, blood. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, such interventions uh, do not uh, produce uh, effects with center certainty because uh, you may nevertheless uh, have a stroke uh, because some other uh, mechanism may, uh, may operate in, in you. And finally, uh, we have uh, interventions in the strict sense, so acting of, on X to influence Y. So for example, if uh, evidence from RCTs suggests that you can uh, um, deliver garlic to um, reduce the duration of common cold, then uh, you can give uh, garlic to your patients. 
uh, to uh, and why when uh, y is this uh, variable of duration of common code, then uh, you can expect that at least on average uh, the effect of that intervention will follow. Well, and uh, now uh, since I mentioned EVM, I, I have to talk about uh, the pyramid, the uh, the evidence pyramid or the hierarchy of evidence. And I want to uh, argue, I, I'm running out of time, so I will be uh, fast, but uh, basically uh, my view is that uh, this uh, hierarchy of evidence uh, um, takes into account the risk of bias. Uh, it is quite a uh, standard view on, on uh, why this uh, hierarchy looks like this. Um, so since uh, um, and this risk of bias is only important if you uh, want to intervene, uh, want to conduct the interventions in the strict sense and not, for example, uh, actions that can uh, rely on probabilistic uh, evidence, even, even if it is false. Um, so, um, if uh, you accept that uh, you can uh, have uh, different types of causal claims for different types of, uh, different types of clinical uh, decisions, um, you don't no longer need this character of evidence. You don't need to prioritize uh, RCTs uh, because uh, other types of studies can deliver evidence uh, that are um, also good for uh, different types of clinical decisions. Uh, so um, to sum up, uh, you can uh, conduct uh, actions uh, on the basis of probabilistic or regularity and uh, causal evidence. Uh, mechanistic interference on the basis of uh, mechanistic evidence and uh, inter interfer <coughs> interventions in the strict sense on the basis of uh, manipulationist or uh, agency uh, evidence. Um, and therefore, um, uh, different types of research uh, methods uh, or approaches to research in, in medicine uh, can justify different types of uh, clinical uh, decisions. Mm, well, and in, in conclusion, uh, I uh, argued that uh, mm, not all types of uh, mm, clinical decisions are uh, mm, need to be based on uh, manipulationist evidence, and uh, the differentiation between different types of clinical practice makes sense of uh, why uh, medical researchers are uh, causal pluralists. Now, uh, before questions, I, I would like to um, have a short uh, commercial break. I'd like to uh, promote uh, my book about economics. It's in my PhD thesis, uh, where uh, I um, described quite similar argument, uh, but about economics and uh, policy making on the basis of uh, economic research. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marius. Uh, great talk. Uh, we have time for several questions. So, go ahead, guys. Gonna do one more call for questions, comments. Let me step in here and ask you. Um, so I wasn't clear. It wasn't clear to me what do, when you were proposing to or well suggesting that we we no longer need the evidence hierarchy. Uh, it was unclear to me how that follows from the sort of suggestion that there are different, you know, uh, um, that that uh, medical research is pluralistic when it with respect to the uh, causal inferences. So, uh, so. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for uh, that question. 
uh, well, so uh, my view is that uh, clinical uh, decisions uh, are not only concerned with interventions in the strict sense, and therefore, uh, because, for example, uh, to conduct uh, these uh, actions, uh, or what I label actions, so for example, decisions about screening, uh, you do not need uh, genuine, uh, well, genuine causal claims in terms of uh, manipul manipulability, or uh, you know, you don't need to have um, to establish causality in terms of Woodward's um, manipulationist uh, theory. But you, it is sufficient to have uh, probabilistic uh, evidence or correlational evidence. Um, so, uh, therefore, uh, you know. Um, it is in, enough to, to have uh, an, an accurate evidence that, for example, uh, the probability of uh, autism in children is correlated to uh, father's, therefore, father's age. And therefore, you, you don't need to have uh, evidence from RCTs that, uh, that indeed uh, father's age uh, causes uh, the interventionist sense. Uh, the age, the, the likelihood of uh, suffering from autism, but it is sufficient to, to have to know that there is such a correlation to, for example, uh, prescribe uh, screening uh, to children of uh, older fathers. Um, so, uh, so uh, this the differentiation between different types of uh, uh, clinical decisions and uh, the argument that. Uh, uh, we do not need in medicine uh, um, this strict evidence hierarchy that prioritizes uh, interventions in the strict sense. Uh, it's in my attempt to make sense of the pluralistic uh, view on causality that seems to be presupposed in, by medical researchers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just, just to follow up, uh, so of course it goes without question, there's no doubt that you can't always run an RCT on, on all sorts of, you know, conditions uh, for all sorts of reasons, being practical, ethical, and, and so on and so forth. So then you do, and I mean, you, you, you really need to uh, work with other uh, sort of uh, studies, and I mean, we have published on that, so, uh, mm -hmm. I, so of course I agree. But um, I, I don't see how the sort of descriptive, descriptive thesis uh, that, you know, uh, you have different sort of studies uh, give you this sort of um, ar ar argument, how, how it logically relates to, to the sort of uh, uh, claim that you can dispense with the uh, evidence hierarchy, just, just on the basis of the descriptive thesis, you know, that there are different studies. So I, I guess that, that there needs to be more, more needs to be said with respect to what kind of constraints are necessarily to be applied to those uh, other studies so that they uh, deliver, uh, you know, good quality uh, or evidence of good quality. Uh, well, so uh, I think that you trying to push me to, to admit that you cannot uh, produce normative claims from uh, descriptive research, and I do agree with that. And uh, I think that my paper uh, is has kind of like two parts where in the first part it is descriptive and in the second part I, I analyze uh, different types of uh, clinical decisions and I consider what type of evidence is required uh, to uh, go with uh, that uh, decisions. And while I agree that uh, interventions in the strict sense where you intervene on X to influence Y uh, indeed require uh, this evidence, so uh, uh, they basically require uh, evidence from RCTs. Not all uh, clinical decisions uh, are uh, such interventions in the strict sense, so uh, not in all cases you intervene on uh, something, uh, on, you know, one variable uh, from a causal structure to influence another, and, and therefore, uh, you know, if you consider uh, what type of ev evidence is sufficient to go with other types of uh, clinical decisions. Uh, from that uh, follows that you do not need uh, manipulationist evidence in all cases or man
Uh, can you hear me? I, I have. I think there is I there is some issue with the, with the sound, but uh, we, we, I don't think we heard the last half a sentence. Or so. Looks like we are losing Marius. Um, that's a bit unfortunate, but I don't see any other questions anyway. So uh, let me close this session by thanking once again uh, our two speakers. And we will see you all in a half an hour uh, for the after the break. Um, of, of course, I just want to make a suggestion again. So um, I will just copy paste the sort of invitation to the gather application. So if you have nothing better to do than to you know talk to people, uh, please take this opportunity to just try out this uh, sort of application that you can access through your web browser. And um, I've tried it and it's great fun. So see you there. And then if not, then see you in 30 minutes for the last session. <laughs>